What we're going to be doing today is we're actually going to step away from it, like the whole of last week because there were so many ins and outs. <laughs> because there are so many ins and outs looking at graphing. We spent a long time, we invested to make sure we were really good at that. There's still more to look at, but I'm satisfied we can move on. Okay. What I do want to remind you of is when you had to think about each of the trigonometric graphs, in particular, you recognized that sine and cosine, <clears throat> they have the strongest link to each other, right? Which is why they ended sine and cosine because they really are looking at the same reality from two different points of view, just off by a phase shift of 90 degrees. Now, for that reason, I'm going to go from there and sort of help you understand if the functions are related in this very close way, then if you know things about particular values of the functions, about ratios, like this, right? This is not a graph. This is a particular spot on the graph, cos theta equals whatever, right? If you know something about a trig ratio, then you can work out stuff about the other trig ratios in quite a straightforward way. So let me show you how. There's some angle theta, and they tell you, okay, we know it's acute. And we know that cos of that angle can provide you this, okay? I could work out immediately what, what theta actually is, okay? I can put theta inside a right angled triangle because it's acute. And then I can just do my normal right angle triangle trick, go <laughs> shift cos on my calculator, and off you go. Okay. Now, 3 fifths is not one of the exact ratios that we know about. What are the exact ratios? What kind of ratio would you see here yeah. that you'd be like, bang, I can work that out precisely? 60, 30, 45. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. This thing over here, this guy, not the angle, but the ratio you get out the other end. Oh, half A half two. would be an example. One on root two would be another one. I wonder if someone's going to throw another one. Root three, three, root three on two. Root three. Root three. Root three. Or one on root three. One. Okay, so you've got those. There are a few other little ones poking around there, but that's basically it. Uh, this is not one of them. Okay, so how are we going to work with this being that we won't get something precise out? The answer is recognize that even though our first instinct is to work out what the angle is, that is not what the question is asking. The question is actually asking not for the angle, but for another trig ratio. So underneath where you've written this question, help me out by drawing a right angle triangle. Oh, just black. As I mentioned before, because we know theta is acute, I can place theta inside a right angle triangle. If theta were obtuse or reflex, obviously I cannot do that, but you'll see what I will do with those kinds of questions in a minute. Okay, now I've just drawn it like this. The scale doesn't really matter, but being that I've drawn one of my sides slightly longer than the other, if I were to place the 3 and the 5 somewhere, remember, this is cos, so which pair of sides am I thinking about? Adjacent and hypotenuse. It looks to me like this side is marginally longer than this one. So just so my diagram doesn't look ridiculous, I'm going to call this 3 and this 5, which makes theta, that guy over there. Is that okay? Yeah. Now, once you see this diagram, you're like, oh, okay, I don't actually need to know what theta is to work out these two guys, because it's a right angle triangle, which means I know what the last side is, namely four. I'm not going to labor the point about Pythagoras because that is not what this question is about. Three, four, five, that's all the sides of the triangle. And now I can find out what sine theta and tan theta are, sort of skipping what theta is in the first place, okay? So I can just say, therefore, sine theta equals, have a look, what's the ratio? It's opposite on hypotenuse. It's just four fifths. And in the same way, I can just read off tan theta. Tan theta is going to be uh, opposite on adjacent. Four or three. Not rocket science. Okay. So you can see here, even though you might think, oh, I should, as soon as you see this, you start thinking about working on what that angle is. You don't need to. Look at what the question is asking of you. Okay. Now, a minute ago I said this works because theta is acute, so I can stick it inside a right angle triangle. So what if theta isn't acute? Let's do another example really quickly. Okay. Now, yes, question. 
called? Yes, what is yeah. it called? Okay, so for this question, because I'm not able to just really simply chuck it inside a right angle triangle, okay? Um, and that's a bit of a relief, because look, tan theta is a, is a negative number. Inside one of these, all of your sine, cos, and tan, they're all going to be positive, right? Well, tan theta is negative, and it even says, hey, it's obtuse. By the way, have a think about why it tells you it's obtuse. I'll let you sort of kick that around your mind for a minute. Morning, Mr. Willis. Nice to meet Because of that, I can't just draw a right angle triangle. I still will, but it's a special one. I'm going to fit the right angle triangle in here, because we know through the unit circle, that you can actually have an angle of any magnitude, not just from naught to 90. Okay? If they tell you theta is obtuse, by the way, I'm just saying dot, 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 but for these purposes, all I'm trying to work out is just what are the other three ratios? If I've got tan, then what I'm interested in are sine and cos. Okay? If theta is obtuse, which quadrant am I in? I'm in the second quadrant, so I'm over here. So in this quadrant over here, I'm going to draw myself my right angle triangle, okay? I'm not over here where all of the um, values are going to be positive, that's the first quadrant. I'm over here where not all, but just sine is positive, which is why tan is negative. Does that make sense? Okay, so I'm going to draw the triangle over here for a minute. Which way does the triangle go? Don't draw this, but is it up this way? Or is it this way? Which way is it? First or second? It's, it's this one, right? Now I remember when I used to do these questions, I always got confused. I was like, I think it's this one? And then I looked at it and it started to not work out. How do you remember which one is which? How do you remember which one you use? What do you use to remember? I'll tell you what I use to remember in the end. I always think back to, because this is something which I seem to get quite consistently right. When you start measuring angles, when you start, where do you start? Where is zero on this quadrant diagram? <clears throat> it's the positive, yeah, positive side of the x-axis, right? It's, it's this guy over here. Okay. Now, as immediately as soon as you put that guy on there, you're like, well, it doesn't look right. That looks a bit wonky. It's meant to be symmetrical. Like the unit circle is symmetrical. Okay. So I seem to quite reliably get the first quadrant right, and I sort of use that as my template for getting the second quadrant and third and fourth correct. So now you can draw your triangle with me. The scale doesn't matter really, we're just using it as a mechanism to work out this question, but try and get your scale reasonable, right? There's a 5 and there's a 12. That's opposite and adjacent, right? So which length is going to be which when I have a look over here? Which, one's, which one is going to be, one of them is, is this side and one of them is this side. Which one's which? Yeah, 12 is on right. This one's the 12? Yeah. You reckon this one's the 12 and this one's the 5? Or is it the other way around? I think it's the other way around. Here's the way I remember. 5 over 12, right? Do you remember I said to you, um, we can define tan as opposite over adjacent, but there's another better definition. It's something over something else. It's sine over cos, right? Now, if you remember that, sine, cos, that tells you which is which, because on the unit circle, which of the coordinates is sine and which one is cos? Just like x and y's on the Cartesian plane, the trig functions are alphabetical, okay? So it's cos theta, oops, that's a theta, sine theta, right? So that tells you which one is opposite and which one is adjacent, which one is an x and which one's a y, okay? So I'm gonna draw that up now. <coughs> What do you think of that? Opposite on adjacent? Does it fit the supplied information? Okay. Yes? No? Yes? Am I getting nods? I'm getting confused looks so far. Think about it. If you're like, I wasn't sure which one it was, just try it out in here, right? Firstly, Theta is in the corner here, so opposite on adjacent is 5 over 12. But I'm in the second quadrant, so therefore, make it 5 over 12, for 10 anyway. Okay? Something that can help you, which is just, you've got to be a little bit careful about, is that this length over here, can you see it's going to the left? So that's why it's negative, right? 
This is actually 5 over minus 12, and that's why you get a negative for 10. Question? Or not a question? Why wasn't it 5 over minus 12? You mean, why haven't I written this as 5 over minus 12? Yeah. Because by convention, just like we say uh, we prefer, I'm just trying to think about an example. If I gave you this, right? You learned all the way back when you first met certain irrational numbers that we don't like to write fractions like that. We prefer to have that, what do we call it? Rationalized. Even though there's good reason to say, actually, this is a bit more of a mess. Like this, I just require more numbers to write this versus this, but we prefer rational denominators. They're just a little bit easier to work with. Okay? In exactly the same way, we just prefer positive denominators. Right? So minus 5 over 12 rather than 5 over minus 12, they have the same value, but it's just neater to deal with. If, for example, you subtract that fraction, you've got a double negative. It's a bit easier to see when they're up on the numerator. Okay, so I'm off in the second quadrant. Now, can I work out what the last side is? Because that's what I'll need to get sine theta or cos theta. What's the last side? 13. It's going to be 13. So you're going to start to see questions like this. They will frequently give you, you know, say 3 over 5 or 3 over 4 or 7 over 25. Numbers that you will frequently find in Pythagorean triads because this is not about icky numbers. We want, you, we want to make it nice for you. It's about working out what's happening here. So from this, we can work out what sine and cosine of our angles are. What's sine? Um, five. It's 5 over 13. You can see, if you think about it in quadrants, A, S, T, C, right? You can see, oh yes, yeah, sine has to be positive, so that's why I get positive 5 over 13. But if you constructed your diagram, right, and you get the unit circle, do you see the negative is down here? It's on the 12 because it goes to the left. 5, 13, they're positive. They're both positive lengths. Whereas cos theta is adjacent, right? And because number one, it's the second quadrant, cosine is negative. But number two, it's because it goes to the left. So that's why it's a negative and that's why this is negative. Does that make sense? The only reason why I say you have to be careful is because if what you're talking about here is the length, lengths can only be positive. What I'm actually talking about is the coordinate. It's on the unit circle, right? So it goes to the left, it's negative. 